so today we're going to solve the review questions for AP Physics in the topic of work and energy. Uh, so for the first question, uh, a force F of strength uh, 20 newton acts on an object of mass 3 kilograms as it moves a distance of 4 meters. So if F is per perpendicular to uh, the 4 meter displacement, then the work it does is equal to, uh, and the answer is A, which is 0. And this is because the work is equal to F dot S, the dot product, the scalar product, equal F S cosine 90 degrees, because F is perpendicular to the displacement, and this is equal to zero. Uh, so for the second question, under the influence of a force, an object of mass 4 kilogram accelerates from 3 meter per second to 6 meter per second in 8 seconds, okay? So how much work was done on the object during this time? Uh, so using the work energy theorem, uh, work is equal to the change in the kinetic energy. So half mv final square minus v initial square. And this is equal to uh, 54 joules, which is b. Uh, so for question 3, uh, a box of mass M slides down a frictionless inclined uh, plane of length L and vertical height H. So what is the change in its gravitational potential energy? Uh, so the box of mass M falls through a vertical distance H. Uh, so the change in the gravitational potential energy is equal to mg y final minus y initial and th this change is minus h, okay? So the change is minus mgh, uh, which means the gravitational potential energy decreased by mgh, okay? Uh, and the length of the ramp is irrelevant here. Uh, so for question four, an object of mass m is traveling at constant speed uh, v in a circular path of radius r. So it's uniform circular motion, okay? So how much work is done by the centripetal force during one half of a revolution? Uh, and the answer is zero, which is C, okay? And this is because the centripetal force is always pointing along the radius towards the center of the circle. And the velocity of the object is always tangent to the circle, which means it is always perpendicular to the radius, okay? Um, so this means that the work done by the centripetal force is zero. Um, or alternatively, because the object speed remains constant throughout the motion, then from the work energy theorem, it means that no work is being performed. Uh, so for question five, uh, while a person lifts a book of mass two kilogram from the floor to a tabletop, um, 1.5 meter above the floor, how much work does the gravitational force uh, do on the book? Uh, and the answer is A, which is minus 30 joules. Uh, so the work is equal to Fg dot S. So the gravitational force points downwards uh, and the displacement of the book is upward. Um, so the gravitational force is Mg and the displacement is h, and the uh, angle between them is one, uh, 180 degrees, and this uh, gives the work is equal to minus mgh, which is minus 30 joules. Um, or also, you may say that the work is equal to the change, minus change in the potential energy, which is minus u final minus u initial, uh, which is minus mgh, because uh, the final point is mgh, and we can choose the initial point, uh, the potential energy at the initial point to be zero. Uh, because it does not matter where we choose the reference point of the potential energy, u initial to be zero, uh, what matters is the change in the potential energy. Uh, so for question six, a block of mass uh, 3.5 kilograms uh, slides down a frictionless inclined plane of length 6.4 meters that makes an angle of 30 degrees with the horizontal. So if the block is released from rest at the top of the incline, what is its speed at the bottom? 
so the work done by gravity as the block slides down the inclined plane is equal to minus the change in the potential energy of the block okay uh, so if we take the potential energy to be zero here then uh, u final is equal to zero and u initial is equal to mgh so the work is equal to plus mgh uh, and also work is equal to the change in the kinetic energy of the block which is half mv final square minus half mv initial square and v initial is zero and this is equal to plus mgh okay so delta k is equal to the uh, to minus delta u which means the potential energy is being transformed into kinetic energy um, and this means uh, and this is because the energy is conserved uh, and the gravitational force is a conservative force um, so another way of writing this is saying the total energy of the uh, block earth system is conserved which means e initial is equal to e final which means k initial plus u initial is equal to k final plus u final okay uh, so if we substitute here, so v final square root of 2gh. Uh, so note here that sine 30 degrees is equal to h over the length of the plane. Okay, so h is equal to l sine 30 degrees. So we substitute here for h. Uh, so for question 7, uh, a block of mass M slides from rest down an inclined plane of length S and height H. So if F is the magnitude of the force of kinetic friction acting on the block as it slides, then the kinetic energy of the block when it reaches the bottom of the inclined plane will be equal to... Uh, and the answer is D, which is MGH minus FS. Uh, so, if we consider friction to be external to the uh, block earth system, then we may write that the change in the uh, mechanical energy due to the internal conservative gravitational force is equal to the change um, in kinetic energy due to the non-conservative external force of friction. Uh, so note that uh, the work done by friction or any other non-conservative force cannot be calculated. Uh, so it is not simply minus F times S, where S is the displacement of the object. Uh, and the reason is that at a macro microscopic level, uh, the frictional force is not a single force that acts at one point, uh, but a combination of forces acting at different points. Uh, but still, we can calculate the loss in kinetic energy of the object uh, due to friction, okay? Uh, and you can find details about this I have included in my book, okay? Uh, and so, delta k is uh, plus delta u is equal to delta k external. So, k final minus k initial, uh, initial is equal to minus delta u. Um, so for a block sliding down a plane, we found here that it's plus mgh, okay? And delta k external is minus fs, where s is the displacement here, and f is the force of friction. Uh, so the block started from rest, so k initial is zero, and the kinetic energy of the block when it reaches the bottom is equal to plus mgh minus fs. Which, uh, which is D. Uh, so for question 8, as a rock of mass 4 kg drops from the edge of a 40 meter high cliff, it experiences a resistance whose average strength during the descent is 20 newton. Okay, so at what speed will the rock hit the ground? Uh, so the answer is E, okay? Um, so, delta E, which is uh, the change in the uh, mechanical energy of the system due to gravity, uh, which is, we can consider it as an internal conservative force for the uh, rock earth system, okay, is equal to, the, uh, to delta K external, which is the change in kinetic energy due to an external non-conservative force, which here is the uh, resistance of air. 
so if we substitute, we get k final plus u final is equal to k initial plus u initial uh, plus delta k external. Um, so half mv final square plus zero, so the potential energy here at the bottom, we take it as zero, is equal to zero because it started, uh, the rock started from uh, rest because it was dropped, uh, plus mgh. Um, the initial potential energy minus FRH, okay? So this is the loss in kinetic energy due to air resistance. Uh, so the speed when the rock hits the ground is 20 meter per second, which is E. Uh, so for question 9, an astronaut drops a rock from the top, from the top of a crater on the moon. Uh, and when the rock is halfway down to the bottom of the crater, its speed is what fraction of its final impact speed? Uh, so when the rock is dropped, uh, initially uh, all of its energy is potential at the drop point, okay? And then halfway, um, its energy is half potential, half kinetic, because it's transforming into kinetic while it's falling, okay? And just before impact, all of its energy is kinetic. Uh, so here at the midpoint, uh, the rock has lost half of its initial potential energy, which is transformed into kinetic energy. So the kinetic energy here at the midpoint is half of its final um, kinetic energy. So K at half is equal to half of the final kinetic energy. So we substitute and we get the speed um, at the half point is equal to 1 over square root of 2 V final. Um, so the answer here is E. Uh, so for question 10, a force of 200 newtons is required to keep an object sliding at a constant speed of 2 meter per second across a rough floor. Okay? So how much power is being uh, expended to maintain this motion? Uh, so using the equation power is equal to force times V, uh, so it's equal to 200 newtons times 2 meter per second, which is 400 watts. So the answer is D. Uh, so thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and see you in the next video.